Grade 4 math number 17. Multiply by using the distributive property. Well, before we start, let's make sure we know what that means. Distributive property. It says that we can multiply a number or we can multiply the add-ins of that number and we'll get the same answer. It's like this. If we needed to do 3 times 12, we could either do the 3 times 12 and do it the regular way, or we could use the distributive property, which says we can do 3 times 8 plus 4, because 8 plus 4 equals 12. This number right here equals 12. So we can do 3 times 8, then 3 times 4, and add them together. 3 times 8 is 24, and 3 times 4 is 12. We add them together, and we get 36, which is the same thing as doing 3 times 12. It would be written like this, 3 times, and then a parentheses, 8 plus 4, and then another parentheses, and then the equal sign. You would do 3 times 8, and you can make a little note to yourself that that's 24. And then we would do 3 times 4, and then you would add them and put the answer there. It's like this. If you had 8 threes coming across here, and you had 4 threes, you'd have 12 threes. See? This is the same thing as 3 times 8 plus 3 times 4. You get 36 boxes. See? Look at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 4 is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. See? And you would add the 24 and 12 together, and it would be the same thing as doing 3 times 12 it would still be 36. And then you get the total at the end, and you have distributed the 3 to each one of them. To distribute means to pass out or hand out, like if you distribute papers in the classroom. So, you hand the 3 to each one of these, and then you add them up. And if you remember, when you see parentheses in an equation, you always do what's inside the parentheses first, then you do your multiplication or division, okay? So, this would be called a partial product. It's a way of multiplying the ones, the tens, the hundreds separately, and then the products are added together at the end to get the final answer. So now let me show you something. I always found it fun to play with graph paper because I liked the little squares. Maybe that's why I like geometry so much and math. But if you get a sheet of graph paper, if you don't have graph paper, you can take your school paper and it's already got blue lines going one way. You can just get your pencil and draw the lines going the other way to make the squares. But if you needed to do 4 times 15, Think of how many ways you can get 15. 5 plus 10, 8 plus 7, 6 plus 9, 4 plus 11. We could have even done 3 plus 12 or 2 plus 13 or 1 plus 14. We could have done that too, right? Well, I just did these because I didn't want to make too many, okay? So, you make a line that goes the same number of boxes as your equation. So if you're doing 4 times 15, you would make 4 boxes coming down this way and 15 boxes going this way. This one is the 4 times 5 and the 4 times 10, see? So there's 4 boxes going down this way, and then for this one, so we did the 4 times 5, and then we do 4 times 10. See how it got distributed over? So here's the 4 coming down and 5 going across. Then here's the 4 coming down and 10 going across. And if you look, it stops right here. See? That's how many boxes are 4 down 
and 5 plus 10 across for 15. Now if we did 4 times 8 plus 7, we'd have 4 coming down, 8 boxes going across, and then 7 boxes going across. And look where it ends. It ends the same place as that one. You know why? Because both of these equal 15. That's 15. That's 15. So they're going to end at the same place here. And if we did 4 times 6 plus 9, here's 6 boxes, here's 9 boxes, and look, it's ending in the same place. And if we did 4 and 11, which equals 15, we'd have our 4 coming down, but then we'd have the 4 and then the 11, and they all equal 15. All of these equal 15. So they're all going to end at the same place, and they're all going to have the same answer. The question is, which one's easiest to multiply? In your head, do you know how to do 4 times 8 and 4 times 7 easier? Or is 4 times 5 and 4 times 10 easier? I think this one's easier. 4 times 5 is 20. And 4 times 10 is 40. Then you add 20 plus 40 and you get 60. That, to me, is a lot easier than doing 4 times 6 plus 4 times 9, or 4 times 8 plus 4 times 7, because those are a little harder to remember. But the 5s and the 10s are easy to remember, aren't they? So you could choose the ones that are the easiest. So if you need to do a big math problem, a big multiplication problem, you pick the ones that are the easiest. Look at 3 times 27. You can't do that in your head really fast right away. How can we break up 27? We could do 10 plus 17, but that's not as easy as 20 plus 7, which is 27, because we can do 3 times 20, and if you remember from our last videos, you can take the 0 away and do 3 times 2 and add the 0 back on when you're done. So 3 times 2 is 6, and then we add the 0 that we took off, we add it back to the answer, so now we got 60. Then we do the 3 times 7. We did the 3 times 20, now we do the 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21, and then we add the 60 and the 21 and we get 81. So 3 times 27 is 81. And we did it easier than having to do the big number. 3 times 2 is very easy to do, and then add the 0, isn't it? Let's try another one. 5 times 43. Could you do that really fast? Or would it be easier to do 5 times 40 and then 5 times 3? So 5 times 4 is 20. Then we add the 0 from the 40 that we took off to the answer, and that gives us 200. Now we do the 5 times 3, which is 15, and we add the 200 and the 15 to get 215. See, we add the products together. Isn't that a lot easier? So, if you remember, take the zero off and put it back in, on again at the end of the problem, then that'll make it easy on you. So it's a lot easier to break it up and do partial products by multiplying hundreds, tens, ones separately, and then adding them all up together at the end. And that is how you can multiply using the distributive property. So we've learned two good things now. We've learned distributive property and we've learned partial products. Isn't that great? I'll see you next video. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you later. Bye.